How do animals adapt? Can they adapt within their lifetime? Or does it take generations? This has never really been done in, in any other organism before. We have genetic data, we have morphological data, and we also have ecosystem data. So why do we care about guppies in Trinidad and being able to do these experiments? With that powerful data set, we can, and you can find out anything you really want to know about the fish. How many individuals does it take to lead a group? In fish, we found that it took about 5 to 10 percent of individuals to lead a group, but then we were wondering whether this could be extended to other organisms as well and whether similar principles apply to human groups. The tools for behavioral analysis um, that we developed, the, the guppy was essential for doing this because they provide such an excellent study system here in the northern mountain range. There's a theory of aging that suggests that Animals that experience high risks of mortality should age more quickly and die at an earlier age. I could test that prediction. Nature and nurture happen at the same time. Fish who are highly lateralized are much better at multitasking. What's happening in the streams of Trinidad is in many ways unprecedented. There's a limited places where you can get this type of data and this is, happens to be one of them. These are complex concepts which are not accessible to most people, and there are things that should affect the decisions that you make. I was looking for a way to make evolution come more alive for my students. The Trinidadian guppies helped make that possible for us. We try to apply swarm intelligence principles that we have derived from biological systems to company management. Data affecting global markets is sourced by wildlife and the forests that secure fresh water supplies for this island. What we want is a citizenry that understands these subtleties of science. The Northern Range in Trinidad is, is one of the most fantastic places to live that I've ever seen.